very good. Okay, very good. Good morning! And welcome to Hard Factor. It is Tuesday, January 19th episode. What are we on? I don't even fucking know. 606? 605? 60-something. 60, oh my God. Five. Yeah. But we're doing it. We got Pat. We got Mark. Um, I'm Wes. And uh, Will is, uh, you know, he's doing his thing and getting that baby. Uh, getting that baby out. <laughs> at, at the time of this recording, we don't. It's, uh, she's still not here. So, uh, we're, but uh, I think Pat uh, was texting with him a little bit and He's uh, they're just, you know, doing their thing and just waiting patiently for her. So that's that's things. Sounds like things are good. Will has memorized the snacks in the vending machine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He knows the doctor's names, probably mm-hmm. all of them. The nursing staff. <laughs> well, that's no, good. Whole, whole deal. Yeah, He's that's good. Shift changes, probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's probably got some favorites and some not favorites knowing him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's found a good lot. bathroom. How many how many times do you guys think Will has mentioned that his family's in the medical field? Oh, I'm sure he's had, he likes to mention that here. He likes that relatable <laughs> conversations. Yeah, with, I'm yeah. sure. Well, yeah. he should be he's proud. Like, Love you, yeah. Will. He's like, uh, just why don't you go ahead and give me uh, one of those doctor jackets? <laughs> he's like Burks, uh, <laughs> Burks, uh. yeah. But uh, no, we're, we're we're excited. So uh, yeah, anything else you guys want to touch on before we we roll into the the news stories? We got some guests this week, right? I think Guns is coming on later this week, and we might get mm-hmm. large this week or next week. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be joined by uh, crypto expert, crypto. Uh, crypto expert Jesse Posner. And then we got Fuck Spike yeah. Spike Cohen next week. We got some guests coming up, right? So, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what i i've 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 gotten into crypto pretty heavy now, and it is so addicting to check your Coinbase app when you have a decent amount of money in there. It's 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 scary how often I'm checking that thing. It's not. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like social media. But yeah, um, but so far, I'm not good at it. So I'm like looking forward to, t- to talking to this expert. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah we're going to talk. Yeah. And I'm a fuck you boys up because there's a way to get in on Coinbase's initial public offering mm. before it happens. And uh, through a. uh some sort of currency exchange in Germany. And you think that it will go up bro? the Airbnb. Uh, they did the same thing for Airbnb uh, and it was not. That's it one. Nuts. That's one. That's one example. Yes, I, I agree with you. I okay. think it probably will go up, too. But it's not like guaranteed that when you buy the the shares, they go up the first week. It's it a should. guarantee. It, it depends on what they what <laughs> how good the IPO people are at pricing it. Right. Like a hundred percent. OK, All right. fine. Guarantee. All right. Yeah. Guarantee. I'm Let's do the news. OK. Am I going first? You're up, Mark. All right, I got a fun one for you guys. Um, Germany's back at it again. By back at it again, I mean they are putting people in detention camps again or uh, thinking about it. So Hmm. That doesn't sound like a good idea. I blame all these Hitler documentaries. There's like a Hitler. There's like there's no less than 42 Hitler documentaries. No, yeah, they just got to stop. Now, obviously, it needs to be taught, but they got to, you know, maybe just teach it. You don't need to have a, a movie about Hitler, you know, like it couldn't doesn't have to, you don't have to like make him the main character. A lot of people disagree, Mark. OK, well, no, I mean, you got to make sure everyone knows how bad that dude was. But there were other, you know, more important things happening as well, like all the people that died. I don't know. Maybe we should showcase some of them. I don't know. Anyways, um, the, <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, it, <laughs> it is, um, you know, not going to be. It sounds like nearly as severe as the Holocaust this time. Thank God, because nothing could possibly be that bad ever again, you'd hope. Uh, but it is being compared by some to prisons that uh, were set up in East Germany during the Cold War camp. What's happening is in total four. German states plan to um, place people who are refusing to go into quarantine and have been exposed to COVID-19 in detention centers. So four states, federal states in Germany are Mm. like, enough is enough. You people aren't listening to us. We're just going to throw your ass in detention centers. Um, So that's the plan, I guess. The eastern state of Saxony, which has one of the worst current outbreaks in Germany, is set to use a refugee camp 
like uh, uh, I don't know if it's like an Im immigration refugee camp type thing to hold coronavirus rule breakers uh, in another German state of baden Württemberg, uh, the, re the repeat offenders will be locked up in one of two hospitals that will be guarded by uh, armed police. Uh, Schleichwig Holstein State will utilize a juvenile detention center to lock up the stubborn adults. And lastly, uh, the state of Brodenburg said, hey, I like your style, Saxony. Refugee camp sounds good for us. We'll do that. Uh, we'll put those assholes that refuse to uh, stay in quarantine in, in a refugee camp as well. So M Multiple flavors. Yeah. They, they would have done a lot better for themselves if they just would have just called it jail. Like, you break the rule, you go to jail. Now, the, calling them detention camps by Germany is not, not the best lingo to Anything use. else besides yeah. detention camps from Germany. Detention I wonder camps. a couple Anything things. Else. Um, maximum security jail right yeah, yeah right anything else <laughs> yeah they lost the privilege to to use the d word does, for a couple um, centuries yeah mm -hmm. does do the uh do the refugees know about this is my first question what are we doing with them uh right second thought this is a great way to meet uh meet a lady or a man if you're single if you ask me because you're gonna have you something a lot in common. common you got a lot in common for sure you don't um, play by the rules that's your first thing that's in common you're um, definitely not going to be listening to authority when you get married uh so probably be a pretty cool wedding makes for good uh, pairings i think. think they're mixing yeah. them up in these detention centers i don't think so no, it's not like a one-to-one -one, uh jail cell i think they're definitely mingling uh according to roll camera on this it's like that what was that love show where they all got um love at first sight it's like love at first sight a lot a lot they should absolutely have cameras on in these places according to dr christoph Degenhardt, uh, he's an expert in, in administrative law. He says the German federal states have been given the power to do this and detain people who break quarantine rule due to the D Disease Protection Act, which was an emergency law passed by the German government back in March, and then it was renewed uh, six months later. I guess it was a six-month thing. They renewed it in November, so I don't know if it was renewed for six months or not, but that's what's going on there. Uh, now, they, ha they aren't detaining everyone yet uh they are only detaining people who have been exposed to covid that refuse to quarantine and have already been fined so it seems to be verbal warning fine human detention center uh pretty big escalation on that last one mm -hmm. yeah. this is the equivalent of when uh middle school kids get taken to the scared straight program like you know it's like we just can't we don't know what to do with them the only recourse we have is to take them to prison and have them um, have grown men make sexual advances at them. Yes, it's like if Scared Straight were 21 days long. But yes, it's a lot like that. Um, Angela Merkel has not commented publicly on the camps uh, or centers, but she did release this press image. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Nah, I'm just fucking. Yeah. Fucking right. You put a, you a photoshopped a Hitler stash there on Merkel. Yeah, have a little fun with it. Why not? Uh, I'm not in Germany, right? Joanna Kotar, a member of the uh, of the Alternative for Germany party, which sounds like a right wing political party. Let me check. Yep, a German nationalist and right wing party <laughs> tweeted that those involved in the centers had been reading too much Orwell. Uh, and yeah, I mean, 1984 is maybe the best book of all time, so can't fault them for reading the Orwell, but maybe chill with the detention centers. True. Really? She, she missed the obvious. She, she, she referenced a fictional book uh, and not, uh, not, not the book German of Apatoland. Yeah, Germany's history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe read yeah. chapter three in everyone's history books. Um, Are reading Mein Kampf in there? Yeah, right. Uh, some Canadians on our Discord group chat, I don't know if you guys are following that today, which you can join if you go to patreon.com slash hard factor, mentioned that Canada was floating around a similar plan to have detention centers open for forced quarantining. Uh, I did some digging. Uh, we we couldn't confirm that. Uh, it looks like Canada does have voluntary isolation centers that some are concerned might head the way of Germany's non-voluntary camps, but uh, nothing yet on that. Uh, our Canadian listeners did say if they get thrown in a camp, they will give hard factor exclusive coverage from the inside, though, which is nice. Yeah. I mean, so I'm trying to think of like where I would be OK with this, like how bad the disease would have to be if there were just people out there that were refusing to quarantine themselves and we're just getting people infected. I mean, if it was like a serious like Ebola type disease where like 70 percent mortality rate or some shit, I'd be like, yeah, lock them up. Um, but it, right, right, right. You know, so like, where do you draw the line? It's yeah. kind of hazy. You got to ask yourself if this is like uh, the equivalent of a uh, uh, 
set an example sentence or if it's actually functional to quell because like these people must know this shit's coming right like you don't just no one just knocks on your door and is like oh i'm going to the camp it's like you've been a bad boy or girl just breaking all the rules wearing a leather jacket Mm -hmm. yeah you're you guys are both right i I will say one kind of funny thing not funny but one one like political note i saw is that when i was researching this in germany and canada and other places the people that seem to be the most concerned and the most upset are very far right groups that are not upset with the actual immigration centers that are being used holding immigration mm-hmm. humans in there right so like they're like not us though right i mean that was that was interesting anyways um yeah i don't know it's it's tough it's tough to say because are they breaking the law i guess it depends on the country they're just out and about they're not listening to people but are they causing danger uh i think a America's pretty safe from this because we do have uh, just a million prisons and everyone's in jail in America anyway, so they can just throw them in prison. Like mm-hmm. uh, Wes kind of hinted at earlier, maybe other countries have laws about endangering people when they spit or something. I don't know. Um, but yes, uh, hopefully does this detention center thing does not become a global trend. That it sounds very awful. Um, yeah. Muddy waters. Muddy waters indeed. It does sound, we hinted at it, like probably the people that are going into these things are a bunch of party people that don't like uh, authority and being told what to do. So if they do start popping up globally, it sounds like a bunch of block parties or mini Sturgises are going to be. No, out. totally. So, it it yeah. sounds like I'm going to wait. It's kind of like the vaccine. I'm going to wait till round one is done. I'm going to see how how cycle one of the detention center goes. But if it's going like I think it's going to be going, I'm going to be checking social media out and maybe it's worth getting thrown in. You know, it's like during the depression when you were hungry, you get a, you get, you know, three meals a day. It's worth a little bit lockup, but I'm talking about sex with party girls. 100% Pat. But again, we're in the wrong country for that because they'll just throw you in jail. It sounds like some of these other countries might, might be the place to get thrown into. If you want to party Uh, that story about camps, by the way, was brought to you by stamps. Dot com. Uh, one thing we learned in 2020, the Internet is even more awesome than we thought. Groceries online, movies online, doctor visits online, and of course, going to the post office online with stamps.com. Stamps.com allows businesses to do all of their mailing and shipping right from their computer. No need to leave their home or office or home office which is so nice. Uh, Stamps.com has saved small businesses all over the country, thousands of hours and tons of money, and now you can too. With Stamps.com, you get the services of the post office and UPS right on your computer, plus big discounts on mailing and shipping rates. Like Pat mentioned yesterday, Hard Factor used Stamps.com to to uh, mail out the last round of stickers to everyone. Before that, I was filling out hundreds and hundreds of envelopes by hand and placing individual stamps, sometimes multiple, thanks to our Canadian, UK, uh, Alaskan, and South American listeners. That was stupid. I should have been using stamps.com. Stamps.com brings the services, the US Postal Service and UPS right to your computer, wherever you are. Uh, It's a must have for any business. Simply use your computer to print Official U.S. postage uh, 24-7, any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send it. You get a $0.05 off first-class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail and up to 62% off UPS shipping. It's a no-brainer, guys. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, This, yeah, and and I I, I wish I had this currently. I'm ordering it, but... I went to the post office today to mail a package, and guess what? The fucking, I went to the, the little kiosk, waited in line, went to the kiosk, and boom, it wasn't even it, the the option to mail a package was was gone. I couldn't even do it. It's like ATM oh, out of out of service. I was so fucking pissed off. That's one of my least favorite lines. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, the DMV and then and then the and then the, the post office mm-hmm. for like lines. I hate it. Bread uh, line. So don't do it. You don't, which one? The bread line. Yes, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's bad, too. Uh, The detention camp line. So make 2021 the year you stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with uh, our promo code hard factor, one word, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage in a digital scale. It's pretty slick. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in hard factor. That's stamps.com promo code hard factor. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Yeah. Did you say a digital scale? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't be like Mark. I guarantee uh, in the next couple of years, Mark's going to get framed for a crime with his DNA that he was slobbering <laughs> all over those envelopes. Uh, it's big liability. It's in, like, it's in like five, six countries and all and in, in all 50 states. Yeah. Huge mm-hmm. liability. Mark's going to be on the news. Guys, I got one of the last Trump dates of the Trump presidency, and uh, it's it's been well, it's, it's been entertaining. We got to say that it's been at least entertaining having Trump in the White House. So here we go, guys. One of the last official Trump dates. 
Uh, first up, pardon me. Do you have any great poupon? Yeah, boys, I'm talking about pardons. Today is Trump's final full day in office. And how is he going to spend it? Well, the best way to think about it is to imagine Trump like a 13 year old boy who's been left home alone and his parents forgot to turn on the safe browsing lock on the family computer. And he's going to be exploring a certain power of his over and over again until it no longer feels good, uh, covering absolutely everything in his orbit. And in this analogy, guys, masturbation is Trump's ability to pardon, and he plans on doing it until he needs Neosporin. Guys, I'm I talking about. I love pardoning myself. I love to pardon too. Yeah, it's going to get weird. He's going to learn a lot about himself. So I'm talking about a hundred pardon sessions is the rumor. Uh, so who's he going to cover with his sweet pardon power? Will he get a little bit of on a, a little bit of it on himself? We won't know until later today. But some of the high, higher profile names have leaked. Um, yeah, Lil and here Wayne. they are. Well, Lil Wayne is a huge one, guys. Lil Wayne mm-hmm. might be getting back out of prison after pleading guilty to carrying a gold-plated Glock 45 uh, while being a felon when he was traveling on a private jet last year. Uh, Just for the record, this is the third time he's been arrested for having a weapon, and he's facing 10 years in jail. He's also worth $150 million, so I don't know how you feel bad for the guy. Uh, One of the other names that keeps popping up is Sheldon Silver, who's a former Democratic New York State Assembly speaker who was convicted uh, twice on corruption charges and sentenced to 78 months in prison, mostly for taking uh, real estate bribes around New York. So Sheldon might get pardoned. Two-time uh, loser getting pardoned? Two-time loser, guys. Uh, Sholem Weiss might be on the pardon block, uh, and he's the guy who got the longest ever white-collar sentence in history. Back in 2000, he was sentenced to get this 800 years for uh what's the point of that what's for, the point of that well i guess he was racketeering uh he stole 450 million from an insurance company uh which caused it to collapse so they really threw the book at uh just give him life without the possibility 800 sure. years what is he a fucking vampire no i know bro it wouldn't that be Bubba, the what's the point of that 800 years is a lot of years guys yeah it's the it's a set of precedent there's a judge in alabama so that's like notorious for setting like 700 plus year sentence for people like that it's kind of crazy going back to that sheldon silver guy though i worked with the person that he was convicted with like well the guy's father his father died but i was working for the state senator and he was convicted with him and his father was convicted with him oh wow sick brand small, yeah. small world yeah uh, crazy. what are you in, what are you in for what'd you get I got 900 years, 900 years, guys. Uh, That leaves 97 more pardons after those three. So we shall see. Apparently, inside sources said there was a lot of talk about preemptively pardoning, pardoning Eric and Don Jr. But advisors push back and like, that's going to look real bad, buddy. So uh, maybe that's happening. Maybe not. No word on whether Trump's going to preemptively pardon himself, uh, which he has until noon on Wednesday to do. So keep an eye out, guys. Um, Okay, enough about pardons. Let's kick it over to impeachment in what is, my opinion, the worst news since the word COVID-19. Trump's personal attorney and easily the worst lawyer since Barry Zuckercorn will not, I repeat, will not be involved in the president's defense in the upcoming Senate impeachment trial. I'm talking about Rudy Giuliani. Uh, yeah, we're not going to get the show that we wanted, which is Rudy just just falling apart uh i missed the barry zuckercorn joke what was it that's the uh that's the guy that uh henry winkler played in uh arrested development terrible lawyer okay could have said lionel hutz could have said lionel hutz there but uh decided to broaden broaden the scheme figure there's some arrested development fans out there i guess not uh yeah no giuliani is not gonna be involved um there was it was 2020 shot to make up for itself in one foul sloop and just like 2020 does it fucking blew it uh, I was really looking forward to Giuliani just uh, just having dementia all over it. He's going to be on a reality show, don't you think? Or dead. I mean, get the Why? guy out of there. He's got children. Why? They need to shut him down. They need to shut that man down. He'll be we on that to... new show, My Dead Lawyer. Yeah, My <laughs> Dead What? Okay. For the record, guys, Giuliani told reporters, uh, quote, I do not need a pardon. I don't commit crimes. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Guys, and finally on Wednesday, Trump will not be present at the proverbial passing of the torch when Biden is inaugurated. Instead, Biden and fam will be greeted by White House Chief Usher, Timothy Harleth, who will most likely be promptly fired. 
tough gig for Timothy. He was uh, put in uh, put in uh, place in 2017 as a chief usher. And, you know, I guess that's actually pretty cool for Tim. Right. You know, last thing to do. It's historic. Yeah. He's he got the call. I don't know if that's he's a high pressure job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Chief usher. Is there a high pressure usher? I mean, is it higher yes, pressure than meeting people at a wedding? I don't think so. Yes. Because you need like, well, I mean, like it's like one step below like a, like the wedding planner. Right. That person takes all the stress if anything goes wrong. But the ushers like, you know, under the gun for, for the beginning of the sh- of the event. <laughs> No, Mark, I've watched you usher at a wedding, and I know how seriously you take responsibility. Uh, it was stressful. Like, I watched you. on your shoulder? I, I can tell with the stress of your walk <laughs> yeah. how stressed you are. I you carry it up job. here. <laughs> I've seen Mark do a great job as an usher. He is a great usher, but he also takes it seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a tough job. Uh, guys, an outgoing president skipping an incoming inauguration has only happened a couple times in our history. The first was John Adams, who was the uh, first sitting president to lose a reelection. Uh, who said deuces to the know-it-all prick Thomas Jefferson, who was coming in. Guys, the second was his cousin, John Quincy Adams, who was, quote, riding his horse while Andrew Jackson was sworn on. Uh, Wouldn't want to be that horse. You know what I mean? He's probably taking it out on that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Quincy Adams sounds like an alcoholic, too. Big time. Yeah. Uh, And guys, the last was Andrew Johnson, who also happened to be the first president to be impeached. So it's probably a little bit bitter about, you know, getting impeached uh, and having to give up his office to the man that won the Civil War, Ulysses S. Grant. So it's not unprecedented, but it's very rare. uh, And it's definitely going to help bring our country together. I'm glad he's swinging big there, doing the big thing. What do you think? Are you I mean, I know you're being sarcastic and do you you think he should be there? Do you think it would cause more problems? Absolutely think he should be there. A hundred percent. He should be there. Yeah, Uh, he should be there and he should show his supporters who are pissed off that in the same way that Obama showed America very graciously, even though he probably didn't want Trump in office, he said, damn it, come on, why don't you come on? I don't think uh, Trump or anyone in their right mind wants to be like too close to the military and the people yelling and all that stuff going on. It's going to be, I know um, some, some listeners are going to be there, so stay safe. Uh yeah, I don't know, not- man. It's like other people like it's like when you smell someone else's shit, it grosses you out. But when you smell your own, you know, you're not grossed out by it. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, I won't say the their time. name, but a good a good listener of ours uh, said that, you know, he's going to the inauguration in support. And then I was like, oh, you'll be fine. He's like, are you sure? And I was like, no, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I would stay, stay away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, hey, you know, look, it, 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 it's it, I don't know. Who knows? I, I hope everything's safe. Yeah, I mean, Me I, 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 I do think I, I, I do what, hear what you're saying, Pat, but I think the uh, possibility for clash might have been a bit higher if Trump would would be there. Agreed. Um, I would say so. I, I, if last week didn't happen, then yes, he should definitely be there. But yeah. I don't know if he should be there anymore. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, let's move on. Uh, President-elect Joe Biden, as we're just talking about, will officially be sworn in as president tomorrow and already is facing a big challenge and some criticism. Uh, It seems that a new caravan uh, coming from Honduras, more than 6,000 people uh, are heading towards Mexico and the U.S. border, fully expecting, it seems, to be let in uh, once Biden takes control of the presidency. Uh, Biden, uh, you know, ran his campaign on softening the immigration policies put in place by Trump. And now they are coming for those promises. Here is a video of uh, what's happening. Marching from Central America with their eyes set on the United States. But will the new administration give them the warm welcome that they're hoping for? A Biden transition official warning the caravan, quote, the situation at the border isn't going to be transformed overnight. Now is not the time to make the journey. Okay, so it looks, you know, they're they're coming and it's looks looks like chaos. uh, Basically, we've been watching the news in our country. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Has has it gotten to them yet? Things must be really bad there if they're if they all want to come here. I think it is really bad. And listen, I don't I don't I don't blame any anyone who wants a better life for themselves or their family. Um, I would absolutely be on that in that fucking care. And if my situation was was bleak in my home country uh, to come to the United States for a better life. Um, But, you know, um, it it, it has to happen in, in, in a in a you know, legally. And, and, and there has to be you know things in place. And, and what that's what Biden's telling them is wait till we get things in place before you rush our border. Um, I hope they know how to work remotely because that's the only. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. It's they're, crazy. Not gonna, they're not going to be. <laughs> it's not going to yeah. work out when they get. Here. I don't think these guys have Wi-Fi based jobs. That's Mark. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so CBS News was reporting on Biden's immediate immigration plans uh, after taking office, according to sources briefed. Biden plans include to, quote, uh, begin gradually making it easier to seek asylum along the U.S.-Mexico border, impose a deportation memori- uh, moratorium and extend protections for the so-called dreamers. He also plans to propose a broad immigration bill that, if passed by Congress, could legalize millions of immigrants what living in the United States. Could, what could legalize? Did you pass by who? What? Congress? Congress? Congress, sorry. Could legalize <laughs> Krong- Congress. Congress. Could legalize we're gonna have, millions. We have to clip that. <laughs> could legalize millions of immigrants living in the United States without permission. So he's uh, amnesty to like 11 million and people, 11, 12 million people. So here they come looking to hold Biden accountable. The new caravan is being organized by the Pueblo Sin Fronteras uh, group, which is an immigration rights group known for organizing these high profile caravans. The group um, put out this statement saying we recognize the importance of the incoming government of the United States, having shown a strong commitment to migrants and asylum seekers, which presents an opportunity for the governments of Mexico and Central America to develop policies and a migration management um, with respect and prom- uh, to and to promote human rights of the population and mobility. We will advocate that Biden uh, government honors its commitments. So they are going to hold him accountable for the things he said during his campaign. Um, Biden's other plans for immigration include to stop building the wall, grant health care to those immigrants he's giving uh, amnesty to, uh, but is warned, again, it's going to take time because of Corona. He's blaming economic downturn, impeachment. So we'll see what happens. Um, but that's obviously gonna be, that's going to be an issue for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I heard you, everything you said for sure. But like, uh, they're it's it's gonna be hard because they only have like those few judges right now. It's it's a backlog. Like, it's not gonna be a, an easy issue for for Biden to navigate. Yeah, well, he's gonna he's gonna. I, I I think I read he's gonna get rid of these like waiting periods with the the judge. I mean, he's it's the process is gonna be pushed through much quicker than than the Trump policy of the of the waiting periods and the judges and all things that things take shit. time though. Right, to Drink implement. kilo. And Tranquila, Amigos and Amigas, this is a lot like uh, the first act of Days and Confused, where the parents are going out of town and they're going to have the party, right? But the, right. the guy who's delivering the keg uh, is supposed to come at like six after the parents are gone, but an he shows up early. Perfect analogy. And yeah. he blows the whole fucking party. It's very similar to what's yeah. going on here, guys. You need to chill. You need to come at your uh, your uh, agreed upon time, or yeah. you're going to run into the parents and blow the whole thing forever. A rowdy caravan this week is not not what anyone needs. Nope. So we'll keep on our uh, an eye on that and let you know how it goes. Um. Okay. Well, guys, this next one will make you think twice about moving into a new place, which I'm about to be doing. At the end of this week, uh, after a trip to Graceland, by the way, which I'm super excited about, uh, might have the inside scoop there. Get the uh, the real where you could the tour where you can see Elvis's dead body. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, anyway, okay. yeah, no, no, I'm kidding, but I'm going to Graceland. 18 uh, year old Annabelle uh, Mickelson or Annabelle Mickelson recently moved into a new house in Arizona, which apparently had a reputation for being a party house, I guess. Uh, and as she was getting settled in her and her roommates, her family, it was pretty unclear. They noticed this suspicious mirror in the bathroom that was like full on affixed to the wall. And it was kind of in a weird spot, uh, which got her thinking like, what's up with this mirror? So Annabelle filmed, uh, and posted a TikTok as they cut into the wall to see what was up with this weird ass mirror and what was behind it. And that's what she discovered. The house was, in fact, a party house, uh, the kind of parties that happen with all the parties consenting, if you know what I mean, because it turns out the mirror was a two way mirror with a camera behind it. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's like sliver. Well, it's like sliver it's like or like Chuck Berry's or... house. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Taking so... a look at the ladies on the toilet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What's yeah. on the other side of the toilet? Uh what do you mean? So like, like essentially what, like the wall in the bathroom, right. Uh, was like a little bit too wide. Uh, like the wall that was dividing the bathroom and the living room. So they're like, what the fuck? But they the, got behind there. It looks like they put a wall up over it. What is it? Cabinets. I'm seeing like, what was, yeah, it was like cabinets, side? but then the, the mirror was like... a see-through mirror and, and there's like yeah. a bunch of AV stuff there. So people were putting, they were rocking a camera, looking through that mirror, right into the, into the, mm. well, into they the just jerking, area. jerking off onto the cabinets though. Like it seems like a weird place to have cabinets. If that's your, I think the cabinets were a casualty. A decoy. They were a casualty of them. 
getting that mirror in there so they could yeah see the ladies doing their business because it turns out the house was was owned something right by a really freaky drug dealer uh let's take it to the internet real quick uh motorcycle mass hole says paranoia much it's an old built-in aquarium plus uh on the plus side by removing it you just got back a bunch of wasted space (laughs) (laughs) and uh annabelle mickelson who's like really reveling in the uh huge tiktok growth she's getting she goes a lot of paranoia here some shit doesn't add up like we all have is leading to one thing and it's exactly what the neighbors told us and motorcycle mass hole says okay just watch story time where she explained it might be a good idea to hire a pi to sweep the house for active devices Shame they wrecked that aquarium setup. <laughs> it's not uh, an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people were saying it's aquarium. It's aquarium. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. He loves aquariums. <laughs> all right. Then if all you we need have, a good but... PI, <laughs> call motorcycle mass hole. <laughs> I would have taken that aquarium off their hands. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need recording <laughs> devices for an aquarium to listen Got to, to a perfectly good aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, Sleeping with the fi- okay. I'm sorry. All right. Well, that's creepy. Um, all right, guys. Uh, keeping with the commute theme for my stories, uh, this one is very interesting. Um, it's not a secret that this pandemic has really uh, beat the shit out of a lot of us mentally. Uh, I, I went to rehab for fuck's sake. Uh, there has never been a better time to be a therapist. Mental health is being seriously affected. Depression and anxiety is skyrocketing. But we think we may have found a great solution that is actually doing wonders for a lot of people. And that is this new thing called the fake commute you guys hear about this no but i i I get it instantly it's like the flight to nowhere okay no uh it's actually even worse mark and 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 much more logical the spoiler it's basically uh get the fuck outside and exercise a little (laughs) um here we go uh see before COVID hit millions of americans get up uh made coffee or whatever and headed out the door to work on their daily commute it was part of their ritual some hated it some enjoyed it perhaps it was the only time of the day where they were alone could listen to music their favorite talk show text their mistress whatever uh but now millions of americans are literally waking up at work and it's making a lot of us go fucking crazy um lynn look at arnold schwarzenegger behind this shit it's go on a walk yeah, it's go on a walk. It's go on it's a go on a walk. walk. Yeah, they and should have just called it go on a walk. Put out a yeah. press release called go on a walk. <laughs> yeah, fake commute sounds fucking... terrible though. But I would, I, I'm, I would buy into sunshine me. Like go on a sunshine walk. Like yeah, that sounds like, fake commute sounds terrible. Well, I was thinking like fake commute. Like I can just like go, like go on an hour drive where I just smoke cigs, listen to Howard Stern in the morning. That sounds pretty fantastic. The walk <laughs> actually sounds worse. You waste uh, so much. Oh, you yeah. See you like their marketing. Fake <laughs> well, yeah, the fake commute sounds you know better than exercising. Um, it's like a two-way uh, mirror. Start <laughs> Lynn, a neighborhood patrol. Yeah, start an aquarium. Lynn Bufka, uh, the senior director of practice transformation and quality at the American Psychological Association, says, "Quote: Routines and rituals are very beneficial to us because they're things that we understand and know what to expect from them. You know what I mean? Um, also, commutes, uh, you know, g- gave us time to turn off certain roles and shut them down for a minute, like the role of a spouse or parent, whatever. Now all those roles are mixed together throughout the day. So kids are homeschooled. One second you're leading a meeting. The next you're changing a diaper or talking, uh, you know, finances with your partner, uh, which sounds great. You know, spend more time together. But those boundaries um, and transitions of roles are lost without the commute. So it's like fucking people up. Do you guys feel the same way? I I personally, I think I get more enjoyment when I don't have a routine. I mean, I, I'm, I'm more efficient. I'm probably better at life when I have a routine, but I don't get as much enjoyment. I like when it's like different all the time. I haven't had a real routine in, you know, 11 years. Okay. I'm um, asking the wrong guy. Asking I, uh, the wrong guys. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, uh, going to the office w- was a thing that even if I was a dog shit piece of shit human that wasn't going to get anything done that day mm-hmm. going to the office i got a little bit done so like if you have a bad day during covid and you don't get anything done you feel mm-hmm. shitty about it so right? i was able to go to the office and be there 100 percent routines make you more efficient at your job what i'm saying is out of pure mental health happiness what do you prefer i i need a place to go i really okay. need a place to go because i yeah, yeah yeah i actually i i I actually looked into renting a fucking office because, you know, with with my other business, like being at work, waking up at work, 
I actually, I couldn't get shit done. I was constantly like going down to get to the kitchen, get some food, turning on the TV, you know, uh, wandering to other uh, websites. I shouldn't be wandering to like, what? I, like, you know what I mean? Um, and it, it was just metal it was just websites. Yeah, metal detecting. That's right. Uh, uh, one of my uh, rituals that I enjoyed. Ooh, this, metal, <laughs> this metal is hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, so one study found that sixty five percent of Americans are also working longer hours during the pandemic because they're just right in front of their work screens all the fucking time. Fifty six percent are more stressed about their jobs and expect are expected to log longer hours by employers because they're always fucking available. Like it's you're always in front of your screen. Why aren't you working? You know, lean in time is is cleaning time. Like. Like they used to say at Best Buy. Um, so enter the fake commute. Uh, basically, That's you fucking the, get up it's the and most take a fucking walk. Fucked up slogan for a place paying you ten dollars an hour. <laughs> I know. Cleaning yeah. time is cleaning time. Cleaning Fuck you, time Best Buy. Cleaning time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fuck Best. Buy. Well, it's a good thing to go out of business. Uh, but no, I I, <laughs> I I feel this, man. Me too. Uh, at, at the beginning of the pandemic, I I uh, I went on my fake commute. I went on a walk. And it was definitely like doing better. Uh, and now I just yeah. don't uh, right. do anything. I agree with you guys. I'm aligned with you guys. But what I'm saying is like, yes, getting out of the house. I'm losing my mind being in my house. But if in a perfect world, if I could go everywhere I wanted to and be in public without a mask, I still like variety in my daily routine over. Oh, it's nine to five. You get lunch mm-hmm. at one. You get you go to this office every day. You come back from this office every day. I'd like to go to different offices every day or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. But you're doing a different job now. So like pretend like that you were I was doing, doing your doing old job. job. I was for a decade. I was doing the, the yeah. uh, you know. But if you're doing that same job at home, would you want to get the fuck no. out for it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What I'll tell you, Mark, is check in with me in a year. I know that you were doing the grind, the nasty. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been working for myself for 10 years and had my own office. So it's like been nice and different. I could see how you like wouldn't want to get back into that dog shit. But not having the office for the past year has been like, uh, am I okay? Yeah. Should I? uh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and common sense. You in a year. Yeah. And then, but then we'll laugh all the way to the bank, and we'll be yeah. smiling and having a good time because we're small business owners. That's right. I mean, we work all the time now, like because yeah. we're small business owners. It's different. But uh, aren't we going to buy like a a, a compound or commune? One hundred percent. So pool? step I, I one, Just step one, yeah. step one is buy a piece of land. Okay. Step mm-hmm. two, I, pr- I I plotted one out for seventy five k. Step two, put a pool in there. I plotted it out for forty k. So all we need is like, well, like 110, 115, maybe, maybe 120, put a little shack on it. Or we swing big, raise two million somehow, hard Ohio, like I'm islands, talking yeah. to you, and buy, uh, I think it's called uh, like the Jewish Island Key. Not, 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 not a pejorative, but it's all, it's for sale. No, it sounds nice. It's for sale in the Keys, baby, for two Christina Millions. Uh yeah, I mean, that's the move. And if the hive helps us buy it, then they get like a full lifetime membership to the island. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See how this works? Call me the rabbi. You know what I mean? Yeah, call it a timeshare. You know what I'm saying? So there uh, it is. Jew fish. Oh, key. Jew I thought fish. you said Jewish <laughs> key. Jew fish. I did say key. Jewish key. Yeah. <laughs> Jew fish looks kind nice. of worse. Oh, is Jew fish worse? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's worse. It's worse. <laughs> right. It is. Worse. It is. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So um, anyway. Yeah. That's not. Well, yeah, and 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 just another thing uh, that's it's completely just logical. Uh, we're on our screens now. You're you're not face to face meeting. You're on a computer screen all day. You need a break from blue, it. The, Take blue, your fucking yeah. Those blue, blue screen are... blue thing glasses glasses are great. Take a break from the screens and exercise will do wonders for your mental health. If it's it, like take a walk, I'm I'm I, do it. If you're if you're suffering, try it. It'll it'll help. Yeah, you it's tough tough for some of our listeners because it's the death the depths of winter in some places. But in Austin, man, yeah. it's been beautiful. Get oh, out there. Seventy five today. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, we care about you guys. We want you to be happy and not go crazy. So uh, try it out if you're if you're struggling with this whole pandemic. Fake commute's huge for hard factor, though, because we're a commuter show. So maybe, right. maybe we should lean into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put 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 the pot on. Go for a walk. It'll it'll, it'll help out a lot. All right. And that's going to do it for today. Um, what we got the disc. Uh, we got the Patreon. Patreon dot com slash hard factor. Be sure to check us out there. We're going to be releasing uh, our our hive hour uh, bonus pod. It's kind of like our radio show where we just kind of shoot the shit a little less, you know, story like uh, go off the cuff 
cusp a little bit. Today's today's Boy, episode I, was a little bit, a little interesting. Boy, I hope my wife and mom don't listen to that one. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I, I, I have I, to I, sign up. They'll have to pay, uh, you know, five <laughs> bucks a month if they want to get in. Maybe support the boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. five bucks gets you Florida Man Friday every week, and ten bucks gets you the uh, bonus, the Hive Hour plus Florida Man Friday. Twenty bucks gets you all that, plus a, a monthly Happy Hour Discord. and the Discord, where we we we've got a bunch of different channels: gambling, news, Florida Man, uh, you know, pet picks. It's fun. Uh, there's it's a great community. So check it out. See what see if see if you, it's something you'd be into. Check out the merch. Go to hardfactor.com for that. And uh, hopefully by the you know the time this thing comes out, we'll we'll have a new member of the Hive with Will's baby. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep you posted on yes. that and the discord, the discord will be the first to know. So another reason to join the discord. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. All right. And, uh, guys, uh, go on a walk and have a great day.